I'm in the town of Sidmouth on the south coast of Devon, seaside resort, pretty little town, and I've come to the cemetery, which as you can see is on the side of a hill. And we're just going to take our time and wander around and see if there's anything interesting to see. MC Freeman, Royal Air Force, 1946, aged just 18. He died just after the war was finished. There are a number of these war graves scattered amongst the other memorials. There's one there, one across there. I'm spotting one down here. It's a forces grave, not a war memorial. This is to Flight Lieutenant Andrew Bloxham, Royal Air Force. He was only 27 when he died. And down there on the lower stone, you can read John Johnny Roby Bloxham, who died in 2001. This one is to DC Channing. He was a seaman on HM trawler Ormond, just aged 19 in 1941. There's a stone here in the shape of a shield. Just a little different style from the stonemason. One behind it is an interesting design as well. You've got the two doves with the leaves in their beaks and they're all cast out of one piece of stone here on the top of this cross. And one nearby has this cross with the leaves raised out of it in a sort of relief. Something a little different here. These are the war graves, CWGC war graves, but these are in black stone or dark grey stone, like a slate. The front one is to J.W. Ramsden of the King's Royal Rifle Corps. Behind is particularly interesting. Two sailors of the Great War. Chief Steward Ching Ling, SS Kendall Castle, 1918. Doesn't name the second one, or maybe it's two sailors plus Jing Ling. Unknown seaman, mercantile marine, they're known unto God. One more of these in the dark slate coloured stone. This is Private L. Wig of the Royal Fusiliers, 1920, age 25. And on the bottom is the words, good night, but not farewell. Now that would be an inscription that the relatives paid a little extra for. The memorial would have been put up uh, free of charge, but you paid to have the inscription on the bottom of the stone. One here that's a simple wooden cross. Very worn now, been there for a lot of years. There seems to be a metal plaque at the base there. A little different here, a metal framework cross and this is uh, for somebody who died in 1989. A larger stone than uh, most of the others and it has a crest at the top, presumably the family coat of arms. This is to David Lungair and underneath it mentions Captain Ranulf Lungair who was killed in action in 1943, aged 32, and he's buried at Oid Zaga Military Cemetery in Tunisia. This one's rather elaborate. It's got a carved image of the Virgin Mary and the child, and it's to Alexander Theodore Croucher, who died in 63, 1963. Top of this section is this elaborate one here with uh, Christ on the cross. Uh, the inscription, however, is very worn. It might be readable with some care, but not readily readable. Another design here with this square column with a sort of stocky, stumpy cross on top and the plaques on each side giving details of the people remembered. 
got a large uh, memorial here, a tomb here, to the uh, Morrison family, who appear to have spent a lot of time in Pe Peking, in China. Memorial here to General Sir John Hart Dunn, KCB, of Cartron County, Roscommon, who died in 1924, Colonel of the Wiltshire Regiment. And he's buried there along with his wife and his daughter. Up here we have a, an angel as part of the memorial. Not so many angels depicted in this graveyard. Up here is this massive lump of stone and it mentions the Searle family, S-E-A-R-L-E. -E. Interesting on this one, this cross has a sort of band uh, carved around it and the words there on the band are a little while. One here in a white marble finish and what caught my eye was the uh, Christian name at the bottom here. Zenus Darks. This one with some local details. If you're a local person this would mean something to you. Henry Matthews of Borough Hill Farm Hemioc and he was born at Coxspur Farm, Colleton Riley and died at Sidmouth. Further up the hill there is the Garden of Remembrance. These I'm suspecting are people that were cremated and not buried here. You can see here an example of some of the plaques, names and dates. Just a memory that these people have been here and have gone on. Further up the hill we have another section which is an area which is still currently being used. These are later graves. A little bit of strimming going on in the background if you can hear a motor noise. As you will have gathered the graveyard is on the side of a hill and I'm looking down the graveyard now. We started at the very bottom. I'm looking across the valley to the houses on the hill the other side. It's a very lovely spot, very beautiful spot, very peaceful. One here to somebody who gave their lives in the Great War. This is Sergeant Richard Channings and if you look at the inscription at the bottom here, who passed away 1917 at the Croydon Military War Hospital after 10 months of illness, aged 35 years. One here with a stone that looks as though it's recently been done to Colonel Charles James William Grant VC on the Victoria Cross for personal daring and resource at the Battle of Thobal, Manipur, India in 1891. And just one here have a different way of doing the memorial. It's a great solid block of stone and just brought out in relief is the cross and uh, no names or anything at least on that part of the stone. Another interesting way that they've uh, done the cross here almost looks a little bit art deco in the in the in the design. Here they very cleverly brought out these flowers, lilies I imagine, out in on top of the cross, in relief on the cross itself. Very cleverly done. And again something a little different in design here. 
This is to Bram Ward Vince. And here we have a statue of this lady, possibly an angel. It doesn't have wings, but angels don't have to have wings. And as always, they leave the foot coming out at the bottom of the gown. This one here has the cross and the metal statue of Jesus hanging from it. It's nice to see it still there. So many of these metal memorials get vandalized, get removed. This one's still complete. This is to the Delaney family. I'm going to call that a day. A very pleasant spot. A lovely graveyard. The stones are well kept. The grass is long, but we don't mind that. Not overgrown anywhere. And uh, just a very peaceful spot in the very pretty, very beautiful town of Sidmouth. Thoroughly recommend a visit here.